Hi everyone, it's Nicole here with our Children of Future, the Clash Early On Child and Family Center, and we are here for Family Matters today. So thanks for joining me. Uh, today we are talking about a topic that is either a love-hate relationship for most parents, and that would be potty training. All parents are usually super psyched when their child is potty training. Um, because that means they're not buying diapers anymore. They're not having to worry about changing poopy bums. Uh, they don't have to put out the expense for diapers. They don't have to launder diapers. It is just a freeing experience. Um, however, hopping on the potty training train can be a little intimidating and can be very confusing because there's so much research out there. So today, what I'm gonna do is throw some things your way and I would really love to have a conversation in the comments below on if you've tried potty training, what worked for your family? What didn't work? Um, I would love to know uh, how old were your children when they finally figured out the potty training thing. Um, it's different for everybody and I'm so excited to share my knowledge with you. The biggest question we get when we're talking about potty training is when? When should I start potty training my child? Well, that's a tricky question because there's no technical age that a child will say, hey, by this age, they will be potty trained. It doesn't work that way. Most children, studies have shown that most children will begin potty training somewhere around 18 months, but it could take much longer for some children to be ready for that. So um, as long as they're potty trained and able to use the toilet on their own before they go off to school, that is the big criteria. So with that being said, you mostly wanna look for signs that they're ready to potty train. Big sign that they're getting close to being ready to potty train is that they will be able to keep their diaper dry for at least two hours which means that their bladder is getting bigger and their bladder control is stronger so that they can actually hold their urine. Um, another one is that they're actually interested in what's happening in the bathroom. What's going on in the toilet? Do they understand what the toilet is for, what the potty is for? It's not a toy anymore. They understand that pee and poop goes in there, that it's not to fish water out of <laughs> or to drop things into, um, that it's got a specific purpose. And if they're curious and they understand what it's for, also a great sign that they might be ready for potty training. Another awesome sign would be if they are able to pull down their pants um, and possibly take off their diaper or pull down underwear or training pants themselves. So these are some really, really good ones. Um, knowing when they have pooped or have wet pee is a good sign. However, know that there is a difference between knowing have been or like I am dirty or I am wet versus I need to go poop and I need to pee. Some children are able to know when they're when they're dirty or wet and they can tell you, which is an awesome start. In which time I would again, and we'll talk about it later, but offer a routine. Get them to sit on the, the toilet or the potty after you've changed their diaper or taken their dirty diaper off. Um, but know that they might not quite be there when it comes to knowing that urge of when they have to pee. And that's okay, it might just take a few more weeks, a couple more months to get there. So there are some times where potty training is not really recommended at that time. So for examples are big life changes. So things such as moving to a new house, maybe switching from a crib to a bed, um, starting at a new daycare. If your child's been sick lately, um, if you plan on traveling anywhere in the next couple of months, or if you have a sibling, uh, you're pregnant and are going to be introducing a new sibling into the household in the next couple of months. This is because stressors, uh, these are all stressors in a child's life and stressors can make us revert back to what we are comfortable with and what we know. So that would be for a child peeing in their diaper. You don't wanna try and put in all the effort of potty training just to have them revert back to having to go in a diaper after the, the baby is born. It's a lot more stressful. Take the extra few months and, and try and tackle it after everything is settled back down. <clears throat> 
So potty training is different for everybody. Some people want to go gung-ho, get right in there, get it done. Some kids pick it up really quick. Other ones, it can take months and months and months before they really get it down. That's okay. Other people introduce it very slowly. They introduce it as part of their routine. Like I said, starting around 18, 20 months, they introduce the potty. What's the potty for? Getting them to feel comfortable sitting on it. All of those things are really important. Big one, don't make your child sit on the toilet or potty against their will. Don't force them to sit there. It's going to make them upset. It's going to give them that feeling of a bad experience. And that might turn them against from wanting to sit there in the future. So again, never make your child stay on the potty or sit there for a certain length of time. If they feel like they're done, then let them up, they're done. Try again in a little while. Um, let your child observe you going on the potty or your spouse or your, your, their siblings. Again, having an understanding of what exactly the toilet or potty is for and how it works is an important thing for them to know and understand. Establish a routine. So if they know every morning after they take off their nighttime diaper that they go sit on the toilet or the potty, that's a great, great um, first step. Maybe you're adding it in, hey, before bath or after bath or before bed. Just offering up different times throughout the day to try the potty. If you see them squatting or grunting or grabbing at their genitals, offer them. Say, hey, it looks like you might have to go to the bathroom. Would you like to go sit on the toilet or go sit on the potty? They might. That's recognizing that urge to have to go. So those are all great ways to kind of just catch and start the routine. There are programs out there like potty training in three days and things like that. People will swear by them. Again, it's different for every family and for every child. So making sure that what works for you and your child is going to be something that you can actually follow through with. It's also important to make sure that everyone's on the same page. This includes both parents, um, caregivers, grandparents, maybe even older siblings that are helping, especially if you live in separate households as two parents co-parenting, making sure that you're both on the same page as to how potty training should go so that the child isn't confused as to why they're wearing diapers at one location and they're potty training at another. Same goes with your, your child care center, making sure that everyone's on the same page about potty training. Most child care centers are pretty open and will often try and be flexible in terms of what they do, um, or they will communicate with you what they're trying to do there so that you can try and follow suit at home. So it's very cohesive. Um, <clears throat> It's also important to know that there's going to be accidents. This is just a matter of fact. Um, I don't think I've talked to anybody who said my child has never had an accident. It happens. Kids get engaged in their play and this can even happen after you think your child has been potty trained and that they've been doing really well and it could be weeks without having an accident um, or maybe even months and then they get very engaged or they lose track of time and they waited too long to go to the bathroom. Oftentimes, even kindergartners will have accidents because of this reason. They don't want to miss out. So instead of stopping and going right away, there will be accidents. It is important that we don't shame them or make them feel bad about having an accident, but just to communicate and say, hey, we need to make sure we're stopping and going right away when we feel like we have to pee. So here are some clothes, let's go get cleaned up. Have them change themselves, clean themselves up, um, and if possible, help clean up the accident as well. It'll give them some ownership. It's not fun to clean up pee. So that maybe will be a deterrent for later on. Um, it is important to know as well that nighttime training is a completely different beast that it is not involved in regular potty training. And when you say your child is potty trained, it does not necessarily mean that they will sleep through the night without having an accident. This is very common. Um, children often are not nighttime trained until they are much older. And I'm talking school age at times. Um, it is completely normal 
for your child to pee in their bed while they're sleeping because their brain is so such a deep sleep they don't wake up when they feel those urges to go pee it is normal <laughs> you will get there um, some parents have trained themselves to go get their child and put them on the toilet before they go to bed themselves uh, like the sleep peeing where they basically the child's very groggy but they're still going to the bathroom you can do that if you want there's a whole other thing I'm not going to get super into how to do that um, but just know nighttime training is a whole different thing than daytime training and that that's okay and then that's normal um, if you have any concerns about your child um, not being able to potty train and they are getting much older, talking to your doctor is very important. You want to make sure that there is no underlying health concerns or health conditions um, that your child has that would be preventing this. Um, and yeah. It's pretty. It's a pretty wild ride for some children. Other, like I said, other children is very smooth sailing. A couple big controversies, and I'm curious to see in the comments if you keep watching and you've been watching me this far. Thank you. Um, <laughs> rewards and bribery. So often I've heard people saying, "Hey, like, I give my kids M and M's, or I give them a treat every time they use the potty, or I give them a sticker every time they go pee on the potty." Uh, those are great tools if they work for your family. Some people don't believe in that and that's okay too. It's again whatever works for your family. Uh, the other big one is that's a big controversy is using training pants such as pull-ups um, or what's the Pampers equivalent? Maybe Pampers is pull-ups. Mm. Training pants I guess they're called. Like they're like a diaper but they're like an underwear. So training pants um, some people love them, some people don't like them, some people think they're too close to a diaper and children can't tell the difference. So I'm really curious to see what your take is on them. Again, whatever works for your family. Give it a try um, and see what happens. If you have questions or you want to know more information about specifics on potty training, please do not hesitate to message us in the comments, send us a private message, or to give us a call at 705-869-5545 for some more information on potty training. Thanks everyone for joining me today for Family Matters, and I hope we will talk to you soon. Bye everyone!